Before I built this table, I had a problem. And that problem was actually this living room. It's kind of a weird shape. There's three doorways right here, but I had no idea how much table could actually fit in this space. So I did what I've done on a bunch of projects. I used an app to scan the room, and I took that scan and brought in some 3D software and tried out some ideas there. Now this isn't as practical as something like SketchUp where you can be really precise and measure everything, but I think it's really fast, it looks cool, and I have found it to be extremely helpful to just try out a bunch of ideas in context before you have to buy anything. So let's get into it. So I want to show a couple other projects using this uh, process and you see in the living room, but I, there is a lot of detail actually. If you zoom in, uh, I modeled the table that I eventually built. Um, I made the chairs we were going to buy. I even tried out some light fixtures uh, at their scale because the interesting thing here is that the scan is actually more or less to scale. So you can build things in Blender at those dimensions and actually see how they would fit in the space. Um, but with that said, as much as I love Blender, it's really not the best tool for really detailed woodworking plans. Um, that is definitely what you sketch up for. I use a tool called Shaper 3D, which has a really great iPad app, but um, it's great for visualizing things and that's what I primarily use it for. One of the other examples I have is this office. I have uh, just to my left, there is a wall with, where I wanted to put, put some shelving and I didn't really know how many shelves would fit there. Um, so I tried a few ideas and kind of learned like, oh, if it's inset from the corner, that doesn't really look great or, you know, whatever. So that's just another way that I've done this and found it to be pretty helpful. So the app I use to scan a room is called Polycam. Polycam is free, even though they really want to push a subscription, but for what we're doing, you can just use the free version. The scanning itself is pretty straightforward. Um, the main tip I have is that you should not scan like the ceiling and a wall or two, because the file will then be a lot easier to work with when you get into Blender, because if it's a kind of enclosed box, it just becomes kind of frustrating to deal with. So after you're done scanning, um, you can hit process and it'll probably take a minute. Um, and when that's done, uh, you're ready to export the file we need, which is going to be a, the GLTF file. Um, I usually go through Dropbox and then to get it to my computer, but you can email it to yourself or whatever works. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at it. So now we're in Blender. Uh, there's a couple things I like to change when I start a project like this and just to kind of make it easier to work within. And that is changing the units to inches. So in scene properties here, you go unit system, imperial, and then I change the length to inches. And that way when we import the scan and we start building stuff, it's actually in, you know, to me at least, units that I understand how to work with. We're going to start by just deleting all the stuff in the scene and then go up to File, Import, GLTF, and go find our scan, import that. And the scan's going to come in a little small, but that's okay. We'll just zoom in, and I like to line this up with this grid. Um, it doesn't need to be precise uh, since this is really just kind of a you know, loose prototyping tool. Um, the other thing I like to do is move it up so that it's sitting at the, f you know, what Blender thinks the floor is where these lines intersect. Um, and then the last piece here is just changing from solid view to material preview, which you can do up in the top right. Um, and then this will then show the scan as it was in Polycam. So now we can just start adding stuff. So I will can add a cube. Uh, here in this cube, uh, I can make it exactly the size of the table. So I can, it was 60 by 32 by inch and a quarter. Um, so there's that. Um, and you can start moving it into place. Uh, I can also just make a quick material so it's not white. It's that kind of wood color. But whole thing is now 
we can actually move this around as if it's, you know, a thing in the space and see how big it is. Like, okay, that uh, I think looks about like a normal table height. And you can try that out, see what it looks like. Oh, maybe this would be better if it were a square or circle or different size altogether. But that's, that's the power of just being able to move all this stuff around and seeing it in this kind of weird, you know, dreamlike version of your space. But um, yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, you can take it as far as you want. You can add lights, make really intricate models, or I really just use it for quickly prototyping an idea to make a decision or just see it in context. And I've found that to be super helpful. Um, I know Blender is kind of a lot to just jump into, but can be really powerful and I I like it um, anyway uh, I hope you found this helpful or at least entertaining um, if you have any questions you know let me know uh, yeah thanks <laughs> <laughs>